<laughs> All right, I guess it, it feels odd to be to be introducing a video formally for me because I don't ever do that. I always start my videos like it's almost like I'm in the middle of what I'm doing, right? Yeah. So for me to start a video that way feels a bit odd and awkward and I haven't been putting out as many videos lately as I have as I had done previously. Um, but Francis and I have been thinking about this idea for a long time, like weeks and weeks and weeks, right? Like mm -hmm. we talked about this at least. Well, how long have we been doing lessons together now? Three uh, or four months? Four months. Yeah, we'll say, we'll say about four months. Four yeah. months. Okay, so four months and pretty quickly after we worked, well, you got on YouTube not long after. Yeah. And you do now lessons and demos and that kind of stuff on YouTube. Um, but we started talking immediately about the benefit of having a guitar teacher versus sort of hitting that wall with, mm -hmm. with YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. And I made the decision because I wanted, a, I wanted, you know, like at the end of my videos, I like to do a little bit of a demo on whatever I've worked on. And it's the shortest amount, it's like the shortest part of the video, but it's the part of the video that causes me the most amount of grief. Right, I've, I'm sitting on videos that I haven't done a demo for the guitar because it's causing me grief to like find something that'll play that's going to sound good that I'm going to be able to work my way through the whole thing like and then I thought there's got to be a better way and of course in comes Francis so I'll let Francis talk a little bit about what he does and how he does it and and then I guess we can talk a little bit about what we've been doing together Cool. So basically, someone like uh, Nelson and I do get this from time to time. Uh, someone who's who's actually fairly competent with the guitar and been playing for a while. Uh, they already sound great, but they kind of feel like they're in a rut and they're stuck. Right? They want to. They can't do what they want to do. Uh, and every time they pick up the guitar, they keep playing the same thing. Um, so basically, what I do is, is I force them uh, to start playing something different. Now, one of the one of the differences between having a teacher and doing it on YouTube is that you have somebody in front of you. Saying, hey, don't do that. <laughs> That's yeah, why good. are you doing that that way? Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Um, and then you you also have somebody to tell you, like, hey, you're missing um, you're missing these skills. Or it's if, the instant feedback. It's also the analysis, uh -huh. right? The analysis and, and somebody to also just give you a kick in the ass too, right? Like, um, if you have a teacher, uh, you know he's going to be coming over uh, that week, um, and maybe you haven't done any practicing. You yeah. start to practice. And they're also going to force you to play stuff that you wouldn't want to do on your own, right? Because naturally, you're going to you're going to want to flow to stuff that uh, you can you can you know do pretty easily, right? You can pick up something pretty easily. If you start learning something that is is not in your ballpark, um, uh, which is a good idea, by the way, to learn something that is completely different. Um, but if you start doing that, it's going to be frustrating, and that's not a fun process. So what we like to do as humans is try and take the easy road, and we'll, you'll you won't even notice that you're doing that. So uh, fixing stuff like like bad habits, um, you know, um, coaching you through difficult, um, uh, I guess, things that, that you're learning uh, and also forcing you to do things that you don't want to do, like learn theory. <laughs> I hate theory, dude. I hate it. I hate it when he talks about theory. But I have to admit, it's beginning to make sense and it's beginning to become useful. There are things that, like I think when we first, like when I first contacted you, I was like, dude, listen, I just want you to come over and teach me songs. I don't want you to talk to me about any theory. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. No trouble. Came over. We had a few lessons. And then slowly but surely started talking about things like major and minor and how we can connect some of these scales. And I feel like, I feel personally... That's because you've had long enough now to get to know where my weaknesses are uh -huh. as a player. And you're able to then, as opposed to just watching lessons on YouTube, because that puts the onus on the player to decide where their weaknesses are. And you might not, as a player, always really understand where your weaknesses are, is what I found. Exactly. Is the biggest key is that I wasn't able really to diagnose my own weaknesses to a point that you know, uh, uh, excelled my playing, mm. right? The way you have as a teacher who's now watched me play for four months and you, you, you've, you're, you're able to diagnose the weaknesses in my playing and say, oh, try this or try that or learn this or learn that. And 
even though I still come to you every week with crazy ideas, and that's the other thing that we were going to kind of tie <laughs> into this, right? Which is not to try to turn anybody off of YouTube lessons, mm. but the fact that for coffee money, like what I pay you 35 bucks every week to come over for half mm. an hour, which I think is, like, I think that's crazy cheap. I think that that is, that's so cheap. Why wouldn't anybody who can afford a five hundred, six hundred dollar, thousand dollar guitar. Like I've got thousands of dollars of equipment here. Why can't I afford to pay somebody thirty five bucks? That's coffee money. This, and what you're saying is usually the case. Um, most most people that I, I go to that are in Nelson's situation, they're playing for a long time. They have a lot of fucking gear. Like they have, they have like they have pedals. They have uh, all kinds of. Uh, they have amps. They have guitars, and they're constantly talking about what they're going to buy next too, as well. Uh, and uh, but they don't quite see the value of, of lessons. Now, they don't, it's not that they don't always see the value, it's that they, um, they think and they are sold that if they buy this next pedal, they're going to sound like David Gilmore. Well, you know what they're it is. Sound no like there's Henry. no instant gonna... gratification with a lesson, right? Exactly, there's no, it's, it's work. You have to like, like getting a new guitar yeah. or some new gear, there's instant gratification. But That's totally it. with a lesson, with lessons, if you're somebody who's driven by instant gratification, it's hard to see beyond that. And I am definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind of person, right? Like, that's it. I, I, that's exactly what it is, Nelson. It's uh, instant gratification versus work. Because um, if you get a teacher, they're going to come and they're going to kick you in the ass, and they're right. going to make you play something until you get it right, even if it's frustrating. And, and that that's one of the uh, one of the benefits is is you get a teacher and you get a coach, uh, because. Playing guitar is not easy, as we all know. It's so hard, um, and it's so hard. At, at at I find at my age, like I remember, like I've been playing guitar. Believe it or not, it's hard to believe. I've been playing guitar since I'm maybe ten or eleven years mm -hmm. old, and I played, played, played until probably I was fifteen, and then I found girls, and then that was it for <laughs> guitar until I was probably closer to thirty. And I remember when I was a kid, like p picking up my old pile of junk, like court guitar with like a, a it was like a, a an EVH ripoff style mm -hmm. guitar with a, you know, Floyd like Rose. a fake Floyd Rose mm -hmm. and locking nut and sitting down with record albums and learning stuff off of like the cult albums and Black Sabbath and Iron Maiden and just being able to learn that by ear. And now I find that so difficult at my age and understanding the mechanics of this how all this works now when i have when i hadn't done that at an early age which i think a lot of people Ooh. you probably find a lot of people my around my age who have money who have gear but haven't begun to realize the benefit of you can have so much more fun with your gear if you know how to do it and if you understand the mechanics of what you're doing it makes working out what you're doing wrong uh, it, it really so does. much easier it makes uh i mean and uh you talked about uh, not liking theory now the one thing i want to say about theory is that when we hear the word theory we think of classical training you know that we think of reading music maybe not reading music but we think of like um, uh, more classical training and uh, we think of we think of scales we think of keys we think of all this kind of stuff but we don't have to think of it in a in an academic way um, I myself I actually played music for over 10 years in bands and stuff without ever knowing a scale yeah you told me that. Uh, so I, I learned all this later on when I became a teacher I was like oh sh I better learn um, the theory side of it and I better learn how to read music and all this stuff because I can have clients that are gonna want specifically that right so I did that and this is 10 years later now but since I learned theory and I'm coming from uh, a self-taught guitar player who never knew any theory, uh, the freedom that it's giving me uh, is, is, is amazing. Now, we don't have to talk about theory in the classical way. Theory is just knowledge. It's just what you know about the guitar. So uh, if you know that uh, this, this is going to sound good on top of an A blues, that's a piece of knowledge. That's theory okay so right. any piece of knowledge that you have about your instrument or music is theory well it's power yeah it's power right so I mean uh, enough right it, knowledge is power and, and I think that I think I, th I think that learning the mechanics of how all this stuff fits together that's that to me has been the biggest bit of freedom it's not even so much my mechanical ability right like 
I can bend notes all day long. I can... I can bend notes and mechanically play the guitar all day long, but it's no fun if you're just stuck in one spot <laughs> and you don't know how to get anywhere else. Yeah. And that's been like, that's been the biggest bit of freedom to me, really like understanding just simple things like, oh, this is the same note, a couple of, couple Often, of strings yeah. apart. Like, yeah. and, and within this scale, you can play it. You can play here and you can play here and this is how all this connects together and that to me has been because now now what i do is i've taken your advice i bought a pair of bluetooth speakers <laughs> i put on backing tracks or i yeah. put on uh a, a metronome a metronome yeah. which is great which plays through bluetooth um and it's more fun to play along, right? Like, because you're now now just stu not stuck in one spot. It's like, oh, I figured out, oh, that's in the key of A, so this is, I'm stuck here now. Yeah, I mean, you're able to experiment without being uh, in a band situation where everyone gets annoyed. So you put on a backing track, you test out the knowledge that you learned. If you learned a pentatonic scale, or you learned the position two pentatonic. You well, but it's a really out. fun way to, 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 te to, 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 to practice your right like it's yeah. a really fun way to practice oh yeah of course like i mean playing on top of a back and track is awesome it's it's instead uh, of just sitting playing scales over and there's a, i mean you can do a bit of that you got to do a bit of that to get your mm -hmm. mechanical knowledge i think at first but for an intermediate player yeah somebody around my skill level back and tracks are important because um what you're doing when you're soloing i'm not sure if everyone realizes this but what you're doing is you're harmonizing with the chords that are uh, that you're soloing on top of so let's say for example the chord progression on the back and track is like so with a minor and f um what's happening is if you're playing something from the a minor pentatonic scale what you're doing is your notes are harmonizing with the chords that are being played. So if I play a note, make it a, a, a minor. Yeah. Oh. Let's try. I'll do the same thing, but let's try something different. Let's try. Um, let's try A minor, C, G. See now, I'm completely. I don't have a clue because I don't know what the root note of that is. It's, it's gonna be. It's, it's, it's A minor. A? Yeah. So what can I use in that? I've been doing this is what I've been experimenting with is working out that pattern that you taught me last week and that has been so eye-opening yeah no I'm glad you're moving around on the neck that's perfect now I want you to do it again so I'll, I'll do the rhythm you do the lead I'm gonna switch back to the a minor F and it's gonna have a slightly different feel because of the chords are changing okay so <laughs>
So See, I just want to keep playing blues because that's all we play every week. That wasn't blues. That was blues licks played on top of a, a, a straight chord. But that's what my inclination is just to play blues licks. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think the best thing that you should do then? I don't know. That sounded more like... <laughs> Sound a little bit Eric Clapton y. To okay, me. which is totally fine, right? So I, I, I'm going to tell you the one thing. That's my favorite new thing. at lesson. <laughs> it's all good. So you, he wants to stop doing blues. Here's what I suggest. Okay. So we'll learn something that isn't blues or at least one step away from blues. So you can do country. Not, not like that. <laughs> so uh, step number one would be to uh, stop using the pentatonic scale. Yes. How do we do that? Uh, well, we can use the uh, natural minor scale, which is adding in two notes to it. So, I mean, with this scale, you'll sound more like um, a little more metally or like Santana. I mean, the, the natural minor scale is used for so many different styles. It's a little more uh, melodic. Yeah, so instead of like, we would have. If we look at the Stairway to Heaven solo, uh, Jimmy Page uses one of the notes from the natural minor and most of it's from the pentatonic, but he does throw in a couple of notes. What do you mean when you say that? See, this is what drives me crazy. This is <laughs> the biggest thing to me about having a person in front of you to explain little things that fly by you that you you would have to work the right. Like you, you have to think about the limitations you have to overcome to just work out what if I was watching this on YouTube, I wouldn't have a clue what he said, but I can stop him and say, what do you mean by natural minor? Okay, so the name of this scale uh, is called the natural minor scale. Why is it natural? Why is it natural versus... Well, the, I, it actually has... It has so I many... I know that sounds like a stupid question, but uh, you say a lot of things that don't make... That seem like there's some other variant. Uh, there, there's... Um, it, now, when I say natural minor, it has nothing to do with that it's using all natural notes because... Um, oh, I see what you mean. So when you think of natural note, you think of something that's not sharp or flat, but that has no bearing whatsoever on the name because we have a lot, we have a lot of natural minor scales. Is that just because how it, is that just because how it would be picked up, like say by, because that's the other thing I've been doing, using a tuner to work out like mm. what it's like, actually hearing. So would that be heard as a natural note? Uh, like say a tuner like the actual now, okay this might be confusing this the scale i'm actually playing is an a minor scale okay. it's the only natural minor that has all natural mm. notes so it just so happens by coincidence that this scale i'm playing has only natural notes in it a b c d e f g a but there are 11 other natural minor scales that don't have all natural notes so so the it has no bearing whatsoever uh, so Just I'll give you an example. Some asshole thought it would be funny to put that in there to make you think about it. Ha, well, there there are uh, there are other minor scales though. Okay. So we have pentatonic minor. We have harmonic minor. Right. We have, we have Dorian minor. What is the difference between minor and major? See this. These are things that mm. like you're you're saying that is an a major chord yeah and then just by removing that's a now minor chord yeah why does why is that okay so uh, is that a hard and fast rule yep yeah. no, uh, no by by removing a finger like say for okay i've got e yeah. how would i make that e minor you would just remove the index finger so that's so the same thing here that's a minor that's a major a major yeah and that's A minor. A minor. Okay, so you're not removing a note, you're changing in it. 
Yeah, I mean, like... You, you, so, you, presumably, you the changing the of the note in the chord is what makes the difference. Yeah, so this, this, is what, this is what you have to understand when it comes to chords, Nelson. A major chord is made up of three notes. A minor chord is also made up of another three notes, okay? So, the thing that you have to understand is that an A major and an A minor have the same notes except for the one in the middle. Right, that's what you're saying. So, we're changing one of the... We're changing, changing this note. One, yeah, so here's... Here's A major. We change one note. Yeah. Now that note we're changing has an interval name called major third, okay? We we go down to what's called a flat third or a minor third, and that gives us the minor um, A minor chord. So th think of it like uh, like X and Y chromosomes. Yeah. Okay, one, one gives you a man, the other one gives you a woman. Right. Well, th this one is the same thing for major and minor chords. We have the X and Y chromosome of major and minor, which is the major third or the minor third. Oh, okay. This is an important concept if you're playing blues as well. Uh, knowing where the major and minor thirds are, very, very important. Which is why these notes, these notes work within that scale. Yeah. But not always though, they don't always work. That's why you need to know when to Right, you have to. to. Yeah, you showed me that before, whether you're in the major or minor and whether that whether or not that'll work. Because yeah. it doesn't work everywhere. It doesn't, no. What, and, and that's the reason why the pentatonic minor is so popular. It's the safest, easiest scale it is. that can work on top of almost, uh, well, almost everything, right? So uh, as soon as you start adding notes in there, it becomes more complicated. You need more knowledge uh, in order to know when to use it, when to not. But it's also w really widely used in most popular rock and roll. Yeah, it totally is. But so is so is the major one, though. Like you, yeah. in blues, we're mixing major and minor together. Right. Um, so like, I mean, Clapton does a lot of... There's a lot of major notes in there. There's a, I hit three major thirds in there. Yeah, totally. If you're playing like a, like a minor Bonamassa song, that wouldn't work. Um, so it really depends on the song. Like if you look at a song like um, if you look at a song like BB King's The Thrill Is Gone, that that is a full minor blues song. We can never use uh, a major third in that song ever. Right, okay, so it'll, it'll sound wrong. So the thrill is gone is what we call a minor blues song, minor all the way through and through. So I couldn't use this no. note because it would sound wrong. Do you remember that song, Shake For Me? The, the, the Yes. Movie? So, Anyway, so that song, I, I played with the blues band last week. Um, oh, yeah, how did that go? And the John Mayer version, he does, he does, a, he does the major version. He, he goes... Um, oh, he switches it. Yeah, he goes, uh, he uses the major third. So but, wait a second, the one that we've been learning? Yeah. This one, yeah, yeah. So the band I played with last week, they do the Steve Ray Vaughan version, which is in a different keys in the key of B. Is that the uh, one you showed me? Yeah, exactly. But instead of instead of doing the um, sorry, uh, it's, it's all good. I buddy. love the way that sounds. It's cool. Well, SRV does it really aggressive. Yeah. So well, I'm still learning how to play it a bit. Uh. But the way he plays it, he, play, he uses a minor third instead. So instead of going, um, what he does is he goes. Um, I heard that too. He totally does, right? Yeah. So he. He uses, totally does. So. So that that Nelson, that's our minor third. In B. 
why does that why does that work the way he's doing it? He, he, he he's just changing the makeup uh, and uh, that his way could be the original and John Mayer could be the one changing it to major. Oh, uh, okay. And, and the reason why you can't tell that much by your ear is because we're playing a chromatic climb. So chromatic climbs kind of hide. You know, I was adding uh, a whole other part to that song too that just did not exist. Oh, that whole, the, that whole part? second part doesn't start there. Where... And then... Th this doesn't... Uh, that doesn't exist. It just starts here. And it's not even the whole chord. It's just... You know what? That song has been recorded by so many people, Nelson, and they've all done it differently. Oh, I know, but I love the way it sounds. So I mean, like, as, as long as you're falling, as long as you're falling within the right timing. This has been the biggest hurdle. This, just this. Because I've never, I've never spent any time. Just, I find gaps in my knowledge all over the place like that. Just stuff that I've never spent any time doing mechanically, and having to overcome. And I haven't been having to overcome that for two weeks. Just with the metronome here every day a little bit. Yeah. Now that climb, the, the, what we call the four chord climb, the, you can do that, you can do that up here instead. Yeah, I know. So. Love the way that sounds. Cool. So I mean, uh, yeah, I, I guess the wrap. I think we should up. wrap up this video because we're forty-five minutes into it, and right. it's going to be a long video. So we wow. should probably. Yeah, you're, I think you're going to edit this down, eh? <laughs> oh, we well, yeah, but we're, we're, it'll probably end up being a half an hour video. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, okay. So we should, we should, I think, if people like this kind of video, maybe we'll make more of them. Yeah. Because. I think this is a sort of a fun, realistic look. Like we're just sort of feeling our way around today, right? Like we, we had some general ideas about what we wanted to talk about, but it's not like this is scripted or yeah. or anything like that, right? Like we're just, we're just sort of feeling our way around. And if people like this kind of thing, I'm happy to share it because Francis is here every week. Um, you know, and, and you're, you should definitely go and check out his channel because, uh, you know, he's been with me four months, and I think he's a great teacher. Um, and if you're in the Ottawa area, obviously, if you've got money and gear, you should definitely give Francis a call. Uh, what? It's Go Guitar Lessons. I always want to say Go Go Guitar Lessons, <laughs> but it's Go Guitar Lessons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And you explain how it works. So basically, with with Go Guitar Lessons, uh, I've been teaching the Ottawa area for oh, say over ten years now. So. Um, and one thing I noticed is that there's a big demand for in-home lessons. So, for example, I'll come to Nelson's neighborhood and teach a whole bunch of people in this one area. And it's a barrier to uh, overcome, right? Having people to come see you. Oh, You've yeah. removed that barrier. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, like, what happens is that uh, everyone's busy. Um, they don't want to take the time to get to the, the music school. What makes school. this a no-brainer? What makes it a no-brainer? This makes it a no-brainer. Oh, You've removed yeah. the biggest hurdle. Yeah, because... Me I mean, having to go somewhere, right? Because yeah. that's part of your model. It really is, and it's great for families because families are busy. They get home from work, they got some uh, a dinner to make, or, or or they got kids activities, whatever. They don't have time to to go to a lesson themselves, or even to drive their kids to a lesson. So, um, so the whole business model in the Ottawa area is to uh, to go to your house. Uh, I have uh, myself and a few other teachers that do that online. What we're doing now is we're building uh, a lesson library. So we're just getting into YouTube now. We're building a lesson library. We're trying to be super accurate. We're trying to include the most uh, information we can in the lesson. So we have the tabs on screen while we're teaching the video. Um, so we want. And you make, do a lot of stuff on Facebook too, Facebook Live and Facebook a lot of Live stuff. We're just getting into. Although we had some terrible. Uh, well, you're uh, feeling your way too. You're yeah, just yeah. getting getting set up for YouTube, some, right? Some, so some tech problems there. You're but, you're running into the problems everybody runs into getting started there. Yeah, and uh, one thing I want everyone to uh, to realize is that they hear me playing a lot of blues today. But in fact, I started doing a lot of heavy rock, um, and I was in some heavy uh, hard rock bands for most of my playing career. Uh, I've done some country, 
Um, of course, I do a lot of blues now, but I do have a lot of uh, oh, yeah. history and a lot oh, yeah. of acoustic history. So I guess the lesson there is learn as many styles as you possibly can. And that's one of the things that will help you uh, and somebody else get out of a rut. Yeah, I agree 100%. And I think, I think that, you know, if, if you haven't, if you're stuck at home like me and you're in a rut and you want to enjoy playing guitar a little bit more, I think, you know, 35 bucks a week or whatever the person's charging or persons are charging in wherever you live, because I'm sure these services exist elsewhere. Yeah. You know, for whatever they're charging, if it's under, you know, I expected to pay more. I expected to pay more in the neighborhood of around $50. I would have been happy paying around $50 for somebody to come to my house. Done. <laughs> but that being said, like, you know, $35 is not a lot of money. That is like, seriously, people probably mm. piss away more than $35 in a week on coffee and scratch tickets yeah. and whatever else people piss away their money on. And it has made my guitar playing so much more enjoyable. I play way more, way more often, and it's more enjoyable now because I know that anything that I run into, I can kind of keep in the back of my mind, and on lesson day, we can kind of work yeah. that out. Exactly, yeah. So if, if you guys think uh, you like this sort of video uh, mixed in with the other repair videos, maybe we'll do a few more of them and uh, see if we can get some, got some lighting on the way. I've got to order some lighting and we'll do another one hopefully. So go okay. check out Francis's channel. I'll leave a link in the description and uh, see y'all next time. All right. Yeah, give her. <laughs> <laughs>